Hello and welcome to the Motor City Hoops podcast, an instant recap and reaction episode from Tuesday night's game versus the Nuggets. If you are new to the Motor City Hoops podcast, I am your host, Bryce Simon, a former D1 Hooper, current teacher, coach, husband, father of three amazing kids, and contributor to Detroit Bad Boys of SB Nation. And when I get the chance to watch our Pistons live, I'll do a short episode giving my immediate reactions, recap, and analysis of the game. Segments will include my biggest takeaways, player of the game, plays of the game, things to keep an eye on moving forward, and more. Before we get started with this one, I want to encourage you to go listen to episode 85 of the podcast that I recorded with Nick Willis. That was one of our weekly Tuesday drops where we got into all the news and storylines surrounding the team and NBA and got a chance to talk to the four-time Olympic runner about his long and successful career. I also just dropped my newest breakdown for Detroit Bad Boys, where I dove into the Pistons team defense during January with looks into on and off ball defense and the rebounding issues on that end of the floor. Also, Mark Schindler will join us for next week's episode, so please send your Pistons or NBA draft questions via Twitter at Motor City Hoops. Follow me on Facebook or on the YouTube channel or Detroit Bad Boy website with a comment. We're recording this episode immediately after the Pistons' tough 105-110 loss to the Nuggets. And guys, we're going to talk a lot about Cade Cunningham during this episode. But just some pregame notes. Kelly Olynyk still in health and safety protocols. Wish him all the best. A healthy recovery. Coming off back-to-back competitive losses to the Jazz and the Nuggets on Sunday. Obviously, this is the second of a home and away with the Nuggets or a home and home, depending on how you want to say it. Sunday, that game was tied at half. A huge third by the Nuggets, followed by a huge fourth quarter by the Pistons. Jokic with a near triple-double in that game. Really interested to see how the Pistons would guard him in Tuesday night's matchup. Stewart was very efficient in that game. Kojo played well. Hayes came off the bench. The mid-range was something that really was wide open for Cade and, Stu- Cade and Stu in that game and something I was really interested to see on Tuesday night. Starting lineup stays the same for the Pistons. Kojo, Cade, Hami, Bay, and Stu. No Killian Hayes. Nuggets go with Morris Rivers, Green, Gordon, and Jokic. First quarter, nice start from Sadiq Bay with two early threes and got to the free throw line. Those mid-range shots are there to start the game for the Pistons, but they go 0 for 3. One from Cade, one from Stu, one from Hamadou Diallo. And then they also miss about three shots at the rim that allowed Denver to take an early nine-point lead. And it was one of those games where the, the Nuggets built this early lead in the first quarter and then we just were kind of able to sustain it. Cade does get it going a little after a lucky bucket that ends up then going into back to back to back threes the final one is step back over Nikola Jokic that Jokic that lucky bucket was one where he's throwing a lob to Stewart and actually threw it into the basket him and Bay combined for 22 points in the first quarter and we got the return of Frank Jackson hit his first three on a nice pass from Killian Hayes Pistons down just two going into the second quarter Detroit gets way too three-point happy I thought here right at the beginning of the second corner with the second unit kind of everybody taking their turn taking one Nuggets again take a nine-point lead force a turnover from Dwayne Casey. This is where I don't love to do this, guys, but I'm going to call out Josh Jackson a little bit. He complains to the ref while giving up an offensive rebound, and that was very tough to watch. It's one thing to to get up and argue to the ref. I hate it in transition, like when you're on offense and they get knocked down and then they're arguing to the ref, give up a transition bucket. Like the ball literally would have bounced right back to him, and he has his back turned to a live ball possession play going on and is arguing with the ref and again like I I've never played at that level I played at a pretty high level I've never played at that level I understand the frustrations and the emotions and you know you you lose it sometimes throughout an 82 game season but man that was really tough to watch and then he purposely like I watched it on the bench you could see him purposely pulled down his mask yelling at the official on the baseline I thought he purposely got his second tee while on the bench gets thrown out of the game And I I just thought that was a tough look for Josh Jackson in this game. And as James Edwards III from The Athletic tweeted out, not a thing, not a great thing to do with Frank Jackson returning to the lineup. So I'll get off my soapbox now, but just a a tough game or not even much of a game there for Josh Jackson. Just really tough watch and, and hopefully he bounces back from that. The game bogged down in the late in the second quarter also with foul calls for Nikola Jokic. I think the Nuggets shot 20 free throws in the first half. We'll talk about it for the game in just a second. 
but just the refs in general, like I know the Pistons aren't good. It doesn't seem like they're getting any calls. Cade doesn't get any calls. And then what frustrates, I mean, it frustrates me, but I'm glad. But then all of a sudden in the fourth quarter, it's like they try to make up for it and they stop calling those things. So I, I just would like to see the Pistons get a better whistle. They probably won't until they get better, until Cade's a couple more years into his career. I don't agree with it, but it just seems like it's the way things work. Pistons go 48, 41, 80, shooting splits in the first half. 15 from Cade, 13 from Bay, 10 from Hami, six assists for Killian Hayes. The Nuggets also shoot 51, 38, 85 shooting splits with those 20 free throw attempts and Jokic with 19, 11, and five at half. The Pistons with just five turnovers to the Nuggets, 12. That was a big storyline for this game. Down seven going into the third, and the Nuggets start on a 7-3 run. There is a Bay 3 to start the second half for Detroit, but then the Nuggets respond, and I just felt like the Nuggets were getting all the 50-50 balls. I tweeted this out. I feel like Detroit was getting none of them. Like Maybe even some of the 75-25 balls weren't going Detroit's way, or they weren't coming up with them. They finally got one, and it turns into an and one on the other end. So it's like, there's just momentum swinging in plays. They're not getting enough possessions. They're letting the other team score when they could continue a run. That one was after missing a rebound, actually, which is kind of ironic. But they eventually came up with it. Sadiq Bey got an and one on the other end. Stewart picks it up his fifth foul in this game with 8.30 to go in the third quarter. Despite the continued turnover issues from Cade, he keeps the Pistons in this game or somewhat in this game here late in the third with his offense. A Cade three cut the lead to six. But it's answered by Zeke Najee, and I really like this kid. The Pistons again cut the lead to eight. Bay misses a layup. Najee gets an offensive rebound, and eventually the ball comes back to him, and he hits another three. Pistons down 12 going into the fourth. But as I said, they outscored the Nuggets in the first matchup, and they'll do it again in this game. Pistons shoot themselves in the foot over and over to start this game, or fourth quarter. Rebounds, loose balls, fouls, bad shots, turnovers, all that stuff. And even with the limited turnovers, it just seems like the ones they do have turn into momentum swings or points for the other team, but they're still somehow in the game down eight with eight minutes to go. And then Kate Cunningham absolutely takes over. He has 32, seven and eight with four blocks, two steals at this point in the fourth quarter with six triples. The Pistons could have had a lead, but they had a missed layup by Killian Hayes, a bucket at the rim. Nice verticality there by Boogie Cousins. And then a miss wide open three by Frank Jackson on what was a broken play. But K just really kind of took over here, kept the Pistons in the game here in the fourth quarter. A quick note against the zone. The Nuggets went zone. We got Cade Cunningham to the high post he ended up missing the mid-range but that's something we discussed with Chris Oliver about putting your best player your best playmaker in that spot really like seeing Cade Cunningham there maybe even something Killian Hayes could do as well I know he's not as much of a threat to score but a guy that can really distribute the ball from that spot as teams zone the Pistons throughout the rest of the season. A Bay rebound in bucket, and then a Cade bucket cut the lead to four with one minute and 30 seconds to go, and then Detroit just isn't able to get any more scoring after that. They do get a Kojo three late in the game. Cade has to settle for a couple tough jumpers. They come up short. I believe one of them might have been partially blocked, and again, the Pistons end up losing 105-110. 17, they outscored the Nuggets by a combined 17 points in the fourth quarter in these two games like I don't know if that's a huge thing but I think there is something to that that they were able to go toe-to-toe with them after entering fourth quarters with those deficits and they only give up 13 points in the fourth to the Nuggets in this game on Tuesday night turnovers only nine for the Pistons so you know while I said that you know it seemed like they had some bad ones they only did have nine four of those were Cades to 25 for the Nuggets Free throw attempts, only 14 for the Pistons, the 30-foot one for the Nuggets. Again, you know, back to the refs. And then offensive rebounds. I thought this was a huge story of the game. Pistons only get nine. They give up 16 to the Nuggets. Four takeaways for you tonight. Bay still has a lot to work on around the rim. He got some really good looks. He was efficient. Like, if you just look at the numbers, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, he was efficient from the field. He shot it well, but a lot of his misses, guys, were right at the rim. So it'll be interesting. This is something I know I don't have to get into it. It's been broken down. It's been talked about. There's all of those things. I just... I watched tonight and it was like, man, if he could make those, like he would have 30 tonight. And I don't think they were necessarily like uber difficult shots at the rim. Like they're shots I think you can reasonably expect an NBA player to make. I think Sadiq Bey is going to end up being at least a two-level scorer. He's going to shoot the three well, which we've seen. I think the mid-range game is going to get there. Uh, For him, like his ceiling is going to be determined by whether he can become that three-level scorer by finishing at the rim. That's a lot to ask. 
I don't know that we see the improvement this year. It might not be until next year, but I did want to highlight that, that we really saw him struggle in those situations. Trey Lyles and Hamadou Diallo, field goal attempts and lack of passing tonight. I didn't think those two guys played extremely well. If you just look at the box scores, Hami had 14, five rebounds, an assist, a couple steals. Lyles had 10 points, six rebounds. But if you look at the shooting efficiency numbers, they were a combined nine of 23 from the field, one of six from the three-point line. So just not a real efficient night from those two guys. Hami took 16 shots, which was almost second on the team, just one behind Bay. Trey Lyles, 2 of 7. And for Trey Lyles, a lot of time, it's like he's so late making the pass that he needs to be made. Kuka Hill brought this up. Like, Cade got blocked by Aaron Gordon at one point in this game. And it's because Trey Lyles was two seconds late on the pass to Cade, who's just waiting in the lane for the ball. And even friend of the podcast, Richard Stamen, at Mavs Draft, who was watching the game, commented on it as well. So I just thought it was a rough night for those two guys. And I think they had to maybe got a little bit too outside their role. I know people complain about Trey Lyles a lot, but I thought it was even worse tonight after I thought we had started to see a little bit of improvement. Pistons continuing to get beat in transition after makes. I believe it was the Kings game where this was really bad. I... As I said at the beginning, I just put out a breakdown on Detroit Bad Boys looking at the defense, and I highlight some of those transition opportunities they're giving up, especially after makes, and then the defensive rebounding as well, and where I think they can get better. And what I want to also highlight is people talk about, well, you have to get stops to play fast when talking about the Pistons playing in transition. Well, this is proof that you don't always have to do that. You can play in transition after makes and play fast because teams are doing it to Detroit right now. And a perfect example of this, not that, but the transition in general was Cade after a turnover gets back in transition, but has no awareness of where the cutters are coming from, and it actually ended up in a foul on him. So transition defense is really hurting this team, not just giving up points, but also resulting in fouls for members of the team as Cade ends up with five fouls tonight as well. You know, foul trouble has been an issue for him. And then my final takeaway, it was great to see Frank Jackson back on the court. It's been a while. The ankle injury, then health and safety protocols. He looked healthy. He played just 13 minutes tonight, which is understandable with the ankle and with, uh, you know, coming back, you know, don't to speculate. I don't know if he had COVID or was it close contact, but if he did have COVID, you know, working him back into it a little bit, he immediately showed that instant offense. As I talked about him hitting his first three, but that would end up being the only three he made tonight. Had a couple good looks in the fourth quarter. I highlighted one earlier on that broken play that I believe would have cut the lead to three at that moment. But he ends up with 11 points on 5-11 from the field. So you, he was good from two tonight going four of six. The three-point shot will come around. I'm not worried about it. We talked about this with Cade Cunningham when he was coming off his ankle injury to start the year. It may take a little while, but it was great to see Frank back on the floor. The three players of the game tonight, as always, let's go in reverse order. So let's start with Killian Hayes, six points, two rebounds, eight assists. Not great from the field, two of eight, 0 of three from three. One of those threes was the little leg kick three. I didn't love it. One of his other ones was guarded, didn't love the decision. He did have two steals and no turnovers. So I'm not saying he was incredible. He had some tough misses around the the basket as well, but eight assists for him, no turnovers, was acted defensively. I'm working on a defensive breakdown where I'm just going to focus on that for Killian Hayes. That should be coming in the next week or so, but he is one of the three players of the game for me tonight. Killian Hayes, again, coming off the bench. We'll touch on that a little bit in just a few minutes. Sadiq Bey, 21 points, two rebounds, three assists, two steals, no turnovers. Again, I already talked about kind of the misses around the basket, so I'll go away from that. Eight of 17 from the field otherwise, and three of six from three as we continue to see him looking comfortable with those three-pointers. He was big in the first quarter, made some shots down the stretch in the fourth quarter. I would like to see some more rebounding from Sadiq Bey. That was one thing that really impressed me early on in this season that he had added to his game from last season, his rookie season. I'd like to see that come back. I don't really love games where you see him with just two rebounds. And then the final player of the game is our guy, Cade Cunningham. You can't talk about him enough tonight. I'm excited to talk about him tonight because he was incredible. I don't know if it was his best game of his career so far. I find it hard to believe that you could find a better one. He had 34 points, eight rebounds, eight assists, four blocks, and two steals. 14 to 26 from the field, six of nine from three. I guess he doesn't have any issues with the three-point shot, right? And he did all of it with zero free throw attempts. Five plus three point 
Field goals made for the sixth time this season. That's the most through 38 games by a rookie, according to the Pistons PR. So a huge night from Cade Cunningham, and he was just incredible, guys. Multiple takes o- takeovers in the first quarter, in the fourth quarter. Looked like maybe he ran out of gas a little bit late in the game. It's almost understandable, but it's nice to see a huge scoring night from him with an efficient shooting. Again, 14 to 26, 6 and 9 from 3. His defense, he does have lapses of time. I, I talked about that with the transition one, but he does. You know, tonight he provided some of that weak side rotation rim protection. I know some people don't love that because it could lend itself to even more foul trouble, which we've seen. But it is nice to see that from him. The athleticism isn't a worry whatsoever. And Cade Cunningham just looked really, really good tonight. Quite possibly the best game of his young rookie season. Plays of the game, I have just two of them. And again, we're going to go to Cade Cunningham. Late second quarter, he dribbles into a post-up. This is something I love to see from him. And I think we're going to continue to see more. He just kind of dribbles down or maybe passes and gets a handoff. And then he gets isolated on the side, goes into a post-up. And that one was a tough one as he played through contact. And then the mid-third, he did have a bad turnover. But one thing you love about Cade, he does it on the court. And then even just with his facial expressions, it's never way. It never changes. He continues to play. He recovers in a nice block on Aaron Gordon. And then he followed up with a deep three off the bounce again as he shot it really well from the three-point line tonight. And just wanted the for those were the plays of the game for me as we continue with the Cade Cunningham love in this episode. And then three things to keep an eye on moving forward. Killian Hayes coming off the bench. I'm really interested to see if, if that continues. Is that where they're going to go? I talked to Q about this on Locked on Pizzen about how this might change fans' expectations for him. Are they going to be okay with nights like tonight where the stat line is 6, 8, 2, and 8 with two steals and no turnovers? And will it all of a sudden be like not the number seven overall pick expectations, but a second unit point guard expectations? Because that's a pretty good night for a second unit point guard. Now, I know that's not great value, obviously, at all for the number seven pick, but maybe this is where he's going to thrive. And what I think is interesting is I believe it's back-to-back games where he got to close out the game also. So earlier in the year, he was starting games, but not closing them. And then now recently, we've seen him not starting, but closing. And he still played 28 minutes tonight. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens moving forward for Killian Hayes if this is what continues to happen. And he gets these amount of minutes and these late game minutes. And if he continues to play well, I don't know that there's been a whole lot of change in his game, but I do think he's getting to run the show a little bit more with the second unit, which makes sense since he's getting a little bit more time without Cade on the floor. Consistency of Isaiah Stewart. He had a great game on Sunday night versus the Nuggets. I believe he was eight of eight from the field, knocked down two mid range jumpers and a three, had some nice posts like moves, not like true post ups, but like got early position in transition or off a ball screen, but really struggled in this game tonight. First half with his mid range, lost the ball a couple times in post up situation, airballed a three in the third quarter. I think he dropped one from Cade in the fourth quarter on a little dump off. So just consistency with Isaiah Stewart moving forward. See if we can see some more of that positivity as we go through the next handful of games. And then also one just kind of off to the side note, how much will we see guys like Luka Garza and Saban Lee the rest of the season? It's been a handful of games since we've seen Luka Garza. As this team continues to get healthy, guys like Frank Jackson come back. Kelly Olynyk eventually comes back again. What? How much are we going to see those guys? Is this the, Have we seen all that we are going to from these guys with the Pistons? Or will we see them again, depending on what happens at the trade deadline and what the returns for some of those trades end up being? But just something to keep an eye on. Something I wonder about, I guess, is if we've seen the end of Luka Garza and Saban Lee with the Pistons, at least for this season. Some thoughts on the other team, Nikola Jokic. He is absolutely unreal, guys. I'm not sure what the right strategy is for guarding him. If you double him, he's an incredible passer. Although Killian Hayes did a couple good jobs on Sunday night, really attacking him. One of them forced a turnover. And I don't know how you quantify basketball IQ, but you just watch him. I watch him play, and I just feel like he has it. It's like, oh man, that was such a smart play. That was such a smart play. That was such a smart play. You just watch it over and over and you can just tell he's seeing things ahead of what other people are seeing. And I was just really impressed by him. The defense is interesting. I'm not saying he's a negative, but I do feel like he gets, gives up a jump shot 
anytime you want to get one in the mid range, obviously if it's switched. So I do think that's interesting. It'll be interesting come playoff time for the Nuggets as you watch those games to see if people are able to attack him defensively. But he's an absolute tough, tough guard on the offensive end. Zeke Naji, okay, a guy that I was really impressed by, a guy I tweeted about. Like I, I just really like his game. He's knocked down shots, grabs offensive rebounds. Really like his game. Interested to see how his career um, develops moving forward. I really like the Bryn Forbes trade for the Nuggets. He didn't shoot it well on Tuesday night, but he's a guy that obviously can shoot it. That's what they ended up getting in return for Bull Bull Plus in a three-team deal whenever the Rodney Magruder trade fell through. So just kind of interesting that ended up being Bryn Forbes. But again, a guy I like, kind of like. I've actually been impressed with Aaron Gordon. I wasn't sure I loved his game, but I think he does fit well with this Nuggets team. You see him make some nice passes. He's shooting 34% from three. And these, you know, when you watch a team back to back games, you really start to get a feel for it uh, somewhat. And I, I just really liked Aaron Gordon a little more than what I expected. And also Jeff Green, just one of those guys that you know what you're going to get from him. He continues to do it. Um, you know, how many ever teams who, whatever team he ends up being on, he continues to give production. And I really do feel bad for Boogie Cousins. It looks like he may be on his last legs in the NBA in neither of these games that he looked particularly good. The shot wasn't going and I, and I kind of feel bad for him. You wonder how that's going to progress throughout the rest of the season between him and the Nuggets. Quick look ahead. Friday will be the next game for the Pistons versus the Magic, who are currently nine and 38 and will be playing the Clippers on Wednesday night. The last time these two teams met, the Pistons got a 97-92 win. That was on January 8th. That's a game where Cade actually went 3 of 14, and Hami was the leading scorer with 17. Gary Harris had 28 for the Magic and was 6 of 12 from the three-point line. So it'll be really interesting to see this matchup again as Cade struggled and not anybody really shot the ball extremely well in that game for the Pistons. Again, Hami leading scorer with 17. See how the Pistons look offensively against the Magic this time around. Mo Bamba is a name that comes up as possible trade or restricted free agent um, for the Pistons. So it'll be interesting to watch him again and just kind of see what he brings to the table, get Pistons fans a look at Mo Bamba. Jalen Suggs is back playing. He did not play in that January 8th game. And Wendell Carter Jr. also didn't play in that game on January 8th. And so those may be two guys that you see in the lineup for the Magic on Friday. They beat the Bulls on Sunday. The Magic did. But the Bulls, of course, without Zach Levine, Ball, Caruso, starting Tyler Cook, former Detroit Pistons. So a a team that's struggling, coming off a win on Sunday. We'll see how they play against the Clippers on Wednesday. But this is a game you have to feel like the Detroit Pistons need to win. Tank or otherwise, these are games you need to win just to keep the morale up. And really a pretty positive month of January sands a couple blowout losses, but some nice wins, some competitive losses, and would be nice to cap it off with a win over the Magic. As always, I want to thank my guy, Wes Davenport, the producer of the Motor City Hoop podcast, who takes care of so many things behind the scenes to make the podcast better for you and easier for me. And I can't emphasize enough how lucky I am to have him around. It it just really makes the podcast so much better. I also want to thank you, the listener, for taking time out of your day to listen to the podcast. You have no idea how much it means to us the amount of support we get right now. Motor City Hoops will be back on Tuesday, as I said earlier, with a weekly episode drop where we'll be joined by NBA writer for Basketball News and 137 p.m. and podcaster for Tag the Roll and Indy Cornrows, Mark Schindler. Please, please send me your Pistons and NBA Draft mailbag questions for that episode via Twitter at Motor City Hoops. Follow me, or sorry, friend me on Facebook and send me a message. You can drop a comment on the YouTube or the Detroit Bad Boys article. Thank you for listening. Go Pistons, and we'll talk to you soon.